All right, so little batteries. I love this idea. So the batteries that we use actually are voltaic cells. Voltaic cells. Um, what a voltaic cell is is basically you're using a redox reaction we've been talking about, letting the electrons flow, and basically that flow of electrons um, um, actually allows you to do work with it. Okay. Allows you to create something called electricity <laughs> that can do work. If you've ever, the second one down there, um, if you've ever heard of um, the, like the electrolysis of water, electrolysis of water, the electrolysis of water is basically zapping water is the way I think of it, to take an H2O molecule and break it apart and you get hydrogen, oxygen, gas, electrolysis of water. It's like if you needed um, hydrogen gas, you could do it this way. So um, the, an electrolysis cell uses, um, in, like in that case, uses uh, electricity to drive a chemical reaction instead of using a chemical reaction to create electricity. So um, electrochemical cells have these very noteworthy um, parts to them. They have an anode and a cathode. I'll go ahead and put those both up. Anode and a cathode. And they're consistent with things we've been talking about. So at the anode, and it's, it's, alpha, it's kind of got a pattern to it, alphabetical. You know vowels, right? A as an anode is a vowel. O as an oxidation is also a vowel. I mean, I'm not an English major, but okay. So actually, that kind of works. At the thing in a uh, cell, in a battery, an electrolytic cell called an anode, that is where oxidation is occurring. And remember what oxidation is. It's basically taking something, and I'll just call letter A, and we'll give it a value of an oxidation state of zero. Okay, and say it over here went to um, plus one. Okay, actually that would be the release of one cute little electron. So it's just kind of bless you. If you're into kind of bless you, <laughs> that's just one random example of oxidation. <laughs> Electrons are released. At the cathode is where reduction occurs. They're both consonants. Wait, no, is that vowel? Yeah, that's right. Okay. They're both consonants. Okay. So cathode, reduction is occurring. An example of reduction would look like this. We could take something like B, and let's just say it was also at zero. And let's say over here it went to a negative two. Actually, oops. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's how that looks. Two electrons would be consumed to do that. Final answer. Okay, so that's what's happening at the cathode. Electrons are being consumed. Um, anode electrons are being created. Then you also need some sort of... Um, you need to complete the circuit, and that's one of the things even us novices in electricity know that um, the electri electricity, which is actually electrons basically chasing each other, electricity, electrons are not going to flow unless you complete the circuit. So um, that's another requirement of a cell. And then oftentimes, if you want your battery to last long at all, you need to have what's called a salt bridge, which is to kind of replenish the charge that's going to be kind of being created in that compartment otherwise. Salt bridge helps to kind of equalize the charge. You know, in um, those, those like, those little dry batteries we use, you know, with the double A, triple A, C, that sort of thing. Um, you can actually see when you put them into the little gizmo you want to um, power, you can see that it's making connection, okay, to complete the circuit. So here is a picture of a uh, voltaic cell. So let's take a look at this little video. Is the um, redox reaction that's occurring? 
Um, let me go ahead and circle that. Okay. We're going to be talking more about, if you're given this, the chemistry of the redox reaction that's part of that, of that cell, you can actually come up with this right here. That's the cell potential. That's we're kind of building up to that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. So, for that particular um, complete cell, we actually had two compartments. Okay, we had uh, one compartment, um, let's see, the anode where oxidation was occurring, see it's the valve thing, anode where oxidation was occurring, can you see the oxidation, copper going from zero to plus two state, and at the cathode, reduction was occurring, so silver is going from what, a plus one to a zero, it's being reduced. And this is kind of reminent, reminiscent of what we were doing with um, um, the balancing redox reactions using the, the half reaction method. You can kind of see electrons that are being um, released during oxidation need to be equal to the electrons that are being consumed at um, reduction. So again, like we added the half reactions before in the lab you guys just did, the overall um, the net ionic um, equation for the reaction would look like this. Okay, and it is balanced for charge and for mass. So that's pretty cool. And the neat thing about this is you could pick any, um, and I brought some examples of some tables here, you could pick any two half reactions and make a battery out of them. Some are more practical than others. This one is just with copper being oxidized and silver being reduced. So this is kind of an important uh, sort of thing. There's a shorthand notation for a, a cell like this, okay, that where copper is being oxidized and silver is being reduced. This is the shorthand notation. It looks like this, okay, and it goes from left to right. It's kind of nice. It kind of makes sense. It's always the anode, and then this double bar right here separates the anode from the cathode. And so it goes electrode, solution, solution, electrode. Which actually, do you see where oxidation is occurring at the anode? And so actually we're showing the copper tube being oxidized. We have the salt bridge, okay? And then the cathode, we're showing the silver being reduced. Going from plus one to zero. Okay, I have a few slides here that, um, just kind of talks about what's going on in these electro, um, these electrochemical cells. Electrons are flowing. There's this thing called gradient. Um, gradient just means that there's a difference. There's a buildup of electrons here, electron deficient here. So actually, it's just a natural sort of happening of things if there is an external circuit to allow that to happen. Okay. That little... Um, that little box there we saw between the two beakers that had a number, and I said we're going to be calculating those numbers, that actually is the voltage. That is a measure of how the impetus for electrons to go from the, uh, the anode to the cathode, okay? Um, and this is just a slide to talk about, again, some of that electric stuff. But this is looking closer at basically the unit that's moving, the little electron. Okay, so um, we see another knot there, right? The little knot, the little superscript zero, you know, and that means the same thing as what we've looked at before. Um, the standard cell potential, 
Um, we're going to be looking at those in a minute. And anytime you see an E with a little circle, those means that means standard thermodynamic conditions, which we know it to be 25 Celsius. Um, gases, I thought this was one bar instead of one atmosphere. I'm just going to look that up. Okay. Show you what my question is. Note to self. Standard pressure for thermodynamic uh, problems, I thought was one bar, which is almost one atmosphere, but not exactly. I'm going to look that up. But I've been talking, I already told you that um, the, if you have anything that's an aqueous solution, it's one molar. Okay. And the units for these cell potentials, these right here, are in volts. All right. So Gibbs free energy, anybody? And actually, this equation should be on your equation sheet you get you for your final. I don't know if you have that handy. This should be on there, too. It is on there? Okay. So you know what Gibbs free energy is, and you know what N is. That's moles. And you know what E is. That's the standard cell potential. Okay, the one thing you don't know yet what is is F. And you could put this on your note card too, couldn't you? Yeah, it's okay. okay, thank you. And the value for F is there too? No, it's not value for F. Seems like I would give that point to you. That doesn't seem like a good one to memorize. But it wouldn't hurt to put it on there. If you had need it for the test and, you, and, and I said I'd put the value for F, Faraday's constant, give it to you, and you need it for the test, and I don't give it to you, you say, Mrs. Snipes, what's the value for, the Faraday, for Faraday's constant? Okay. So the change in Gibbs free energy associated with the redox reaction is equal to um, negative... N is the number of moles of electrons that are being um, released and consumed. Okay. Um, and F is Faraday's constant, and E is the standard cell potential. So a lot of times you're trying to solve for probably Gibbs free energy or standard cell potential. Spontaneity. We said that um, Gibbs free energy <laughs> needs to be, what, negative in order for a reaction to be spontaneous? So do you buy this, that actually the cell potential needs to be positive in order for spontaneity to occur, since there's a negative in front of that quantity? You are right. Okay. That is totally right. The cell potential we're going to be looking for in order for the redox reaction to be spontaneous, as written, that E naught, that cell potential, needs to be positive, greater than zero. And that's consistent with Gibbs free energy being negative. So, um, remember a minute ago we took the copper and the silver and we took the two half reactions and made a battery out of them, right? So, in order to understand um, the, the whole cell potential, we can actually just add up the two half cell potentials. And so, there are 10 billion, and I printed out the next three, I think, there are 10 billion tables out there. Each line is a half cell potential. But it's only the reduction half cell. So like in the example we looked at, the thing that was oxidized, you're going to see the reduction half cell potential. And then I'm going to tell you this in so many words, but basically you're going to have to flip it around. And that cell potential that's listed, you're going to have to take negative 1 times it. Okay, so that's how that's going to work. So these are half cell potentials, the reduction half cell potentials. That's all you're going to see. So that was one, two, three. So notice that as these are actually ordered, they're not alphabetical. They're ordered by the greatest half reduction, okay, then getting less, going through zero, and then going into negative. So are you guys, does this make sense to you? As I get to this last slide, the more negative it is as a reduction half cell, it's probably going to be oxidation. Because <laughs> if, you, if you go with them instead of reduction, oxidation, you get to swing it around, and you get to take whatever that is times minus. <coughs> so that's kind of how that's going to work. 
So if you're trying to make a cell with two half cells, you've got to have a reduction half, which is actually this on the table, and you have to have an oxidation half. Okay. The one that is going to be the, um, the reduction part is going to have the largest E re half reduction, E on that table. Okay, the one that's going, you're going to go with the oxidation, basically, is going to be the lowest E. So this is a table of things we'll be referring to. Let's see, what was it? Just a minute ago, we had, was it this one? We had uh, silver and copper, but I'm guessing that the copper actually went from copper to copper plus two. Okay, so if you were going to take those two, what makes most sense is to go with reduction here, okay, and to make this one your oxidation, which you're going to reverse that, and so this is what I'm trying to say. This E oxidation will be equal to negative point, I'm running out of room, 0.337 volts. Does that make sense? Okay. And then to see what it should, what the little box should read, you're going to take a 0 0.800, and from that you're going to add negative 0.337. That's how that works. So these are increasing, they're great at being the reduction half, and these are increasing, they're great at being the oxidation half. Why? Because they're smaller. All right. So the tabulated um, half cell potentials are going to be for reduction. If you need the oxidation half cell potential, okay, you just reverse the sign or take it times minus one. Okay, like I kind of showed you for copper. This is one where I get to this part of the semester and I'm like, really? Is that really how that works? So these half cell potentials they are intensive, they are intensive amounts. So they're independent of amount, intensive properties. They're in, independent of amount, okay? So the cool thing is, is if you need to scale up your half reaction, like you might need to, okay, that does not change that half cell potential. That is so strange to me. So I'm going to show you a SHE, an S-H-E, um, a standard hydrogen electrode. And actually, um, the standard hydrogen electrode works great if you're trying to find the half cell potential of anything else. Because basically, you have to have, to complete the circuit, you need to do both. So I'll show you what I mean. These, these cell potentials were measured against SHEs, the standard hydrogen electrode. Um, if you look at these tables I saw a little bit ago, this where it kind of bottoms out zero and then it gets, goes positive and it gets, begins to get negative, okay, that actually is the, the standard hydrogen electrode, cell potential zero. Okay, so I'm going to show you a picture of what this looks like. But basically hydrogen is being um, oxidized, excuse me, being reduced because it's going from a plus one state to a zero state. So if we switch it around and we show hydrogen being oxidized, going from a zero to a plus one state, actually that will have the same if you take it negative times. 
sorry, if you take zero times negative one, you still get zero. So it's kind of a tipping point that these are measured against. So this is your chi. This is your standard hydrogen electrode. And it has, the platinum is just actually a source where you're, um, where just providing a surface for the redox reaction. You bubble hydrogen gas through it, and it's in um, an acidic solution where, uh, if it's standard conditions, it must be uh, one molar. So that is half of a battery. So here actually are two different batteries, two different cells. Okay, In this case, they both have the she, she devil. <laughs> okay, but they have, the other half is different. So in one case, we have copper doing its thing. In one case, we have zinc doing its thing. So the thing about it is... Let's see. If you were to find copper on the, this sheet, um, this is like the three tables side by side, you find it there it is. Okay. So here's copper. It has a um, half cell potential of uh, 0 0.340. So actually, it's going to be a good, in this case, it's going to be reduced. We're going to go with the reduction, okay? The she is 0, and this is 0 0.340, okay? That's why that reads 0 0.340. In the other case, if you find zinc, you're going to actually find zinc 0 0.137. Uh, wait, no, it isn't. Zinc is down here. Okay, zinc is actually... Um, negative 0.763. So the fact that it's negative, if you want the cell to go spontaneously, you're not going to go with reduction, you're going to go with oxidation. So actually that's what's happening there. Okay. All right. So see the, the sheet, the standard hydrogen electrode, we have the Hydrogen being what? Um, oxidized, right? Going from a zero to a plus one. Okay, copper going from a plus two to a zero. It's being reduced. So you want to be able to write that shorthand notation we looked at before. Okay. So the shorthand notation always goes from anode to cathode. So anode is where oxidation is occurring. What's being oxidized? The hydrogen. So that's why it's there over the, on the left. We have the double bar here. Okay, that's like the salt bridge. Okay, and then we have a cathode cell. And so the cathode is where reduction is occurring, and copper is going from a plus two to a zero. So these shorthand notations kind of read from left to right as is what's happening. If you're asked to do this and you don't get the platinum here for the she, that would be fine. And this is the other one we looked at, okay? This we said where the zinc made more sense for it to be oxidized because it had like a negative half cell potential for its reduction. So here we see it being oxidized, going from zinc uh, to zero. Oh, gosh. <laughs> see, I don't think that error was in there before, but no one's ever complained about it, okay? <laughs> Okay, there we go. That's better. Zinc's going from an oxidation state of zero to two, plus two, and hydrogen's going from a plus one to a zero, so it's being reduced. Is that how it is in your notes, too? Okay. That is so funny. All right, and I've kind of alluded to this, so we're, we're getting close, guys. So you get to pick your, the things that you want to be in your two half cells, and it has to make sense. One of them has to be oxidation, one has to be reduction, and you want to get a, a positive um, E cell, cell potential, okay? 
And like we've been saying, um, since you don't, we don't have a table for the oxidation ones, right? Okay, basically you have to take whatever this is and take it times minus one. All right. So let's do one. Um, notice that nitrate and uh, potass uh, potassium ion are just spectrator ions. Okay. And the 0 .460, that should probably be what we're going to be after for our E0 or E0. Okay. So it looks like the, our choices are copper and silver. And if you find them on the table, you'll see that copper would be a better one to be oxidized and silver would be a better one to be reduced. Okay. Seems like we looked at this one before. So 0 0.800 minus 0 0.340 will give you what you're seeing on the voltmeter there, 0.460. One of the things uh, I mentioned that you can do homework for uh, extra credit, you'll also need to be able to take this sort of redox reaction for this um, electrochemical cell and write it in that shorthand notation. So anode compartment, double bar, cathode compartment, oxidation, reduction. Notice a standard state, and actually we're going to be getting into this on Friday just a little bit. Notice the molar concentrations of the solutions down there are the required one molar. Is there one more? Oh, there you go. <laughs> So does, does this make sense to you? There are some cases where actually the, um, the copper up there, there are some cases where it makes more sense for it to be the, the that what's being reduced if it's actually going to combine with something that's even got a smaller um, half cell reduction potential. So was that? Okay. I was like, I thought I was, this was, oh, so that was copper and silver, and now we're switching gears, doing copper again, but zinc. And you could be tasked with these five things. So in order to do it right, okay, you're going to need the half cell potentials for both of them. Um, to know which one's going to undergo oxidation, which one's going to undergo reduction. Um, if we just look them up here, we've been looking at copper is, where did it go? Copper, there it is. Okay. Here's copper, just a couple clicks above the standard hydrogen um, electrode. And then zinc is. Oh, there it is. Okay, zinc is under the standard hydrogen electron. Zinc has actually got a negative value. Okay, so that already should tell you that we're not going to go with reduction, zinc being reduced. We're going to go with zinc being oxidized. So things kind of start to fall in place for that. So we're going to write the oxidation half reaction for zinc. Okay, we're going to write um, the reduction half reaction for copper. Write the balanced reaction and calculate the standard cell potential from those numbers, those half cell potentials, and then we're going to write that shorthand notation. So here we go. If you were to look up the values like I just painfully did, this is what you would come up with. Okay. So um, definitely looks like we're going to reverse the zinc as it's written. And if we reverse it, then it's oxidation instead of being um, half uh, cell potential, instead of being negative uh, 0.763, it's positive 0.763 volts. Then we just go ahead and bring down the copper as it is, because we're going to go with the reduction for copper this time. 
notice that two electrons are given up um, in the zinc being oxidized and two electrons are consumed in the copper uh, being reduced. And if you were using that equation, um, that delta G is equal to negative NF um, E naught, N would be two, because that's two moles. Oh, sorry. And so this um, half cell potential for the uh, reduction of copper, we just take it right off the table. We add the two half reactions together, and we get um, copper solid reacting with uh, one mole of um, copper two goes to form zinc two plus and copper solid. And then if we add those two half cell potentials, um, and remember since we're adding, we round according to decimals, so we are allowed three decimals. We have a Waffen cell potential of 1.103 volts. That's pretty cool. So the last thing you need to do is to write that shorthand notation. So it's always anode, double bar, cathode. Okay, so what's being oxidized, double bar, what's being reduced. So it looks like this. Zinc or zinc solid, single bar zinc plus two cation. Double bar, meaning that's like the salt bridge. The Cathode compartment looks like copper plus two, single bar, copper, copper solid. Yep. That's What's that? It's raining. Oh, see, you don't want to leave now anyway. I don't uh, think it's going to last very long. <laughs> For once, my windows are up. I always have oh my gosh. Mine are always <laughs> down there, Rays. That makes me so my happy. My sunroof is open, too. It's open? That's the key of being a white girl and having a tear open. <laughs> I have a window, so I think Correct. That's not as bad. Is the sunroof open? I think Dude. I have a blanket in my car if I need one. I have a towel, so it's okay. Oh, you're prepared. It's stopped. Yeah. See, it stopped. Well, it's, I just checked because I saw, like, I keep checking back there, and it's not just even any three. So, <laughs> here's a picture of, of the problem we just did, okay? So, you see your salt bridge, you see your external circuit, you see your two um, compartments. All right. Many, many, many more. Okay. So, um, assignment slide. Yeah, if you put on little, if you use magnifying glass, you can see what those numbers are in your notes. <laughs> So, um, so here's the deal here. Now, this wouldn't be for lab credit. Okay, so this is switching gear. This actually would be t for 10. Um, this is not an official assignment. So if you do this assignment, you get 10 extra credit points that can fill in prop holes. Um, actually, doing these um, would also help you maybe for your final. So notice that I said just A and B for both of them. So it looks like this, A and B, and A and B, okay? And um, so for the first one, I don't have any hints or anything, but it just says write the half reactions like we've been doing, mm -hmm. and the balanced equation, okay, uh, diagrammed here. That's it. So two things, one, two. For the other one, it says um, calculate the standard cell potential. Um, and it basically says which ones will be spontaneous. So you're looking for a positive E, right? So that doesn't look too bad either. Okay, that's all I have. Any questions? Yeah, it's all this due tomorrow. This will be due when you come to take your test on Monday. Okay. All the extra credit is due, or like the homework from yesterday? The homework from yesterday is due Friday. Friday. Okay, and then all and the this extra stuff, it, it's, if you do any of this stuff, just when you come take your test. So it can't be after your test. Cool. Yeah, the lab credit when you come take your test Monday. Yeah. Cool.
See, half a glass full. I was like, this is going to be a long night. Half a glass full. Oh my gosh, really? You think I would do that? Well, I didn't think you would want anything due Monday, so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to do that.